In the geometry step, as we saw, we were affecting the mathematical model. We were specifying geometric parameters that appear in the mathematical model. Now we're going to move on to meshing, where we're not going to affect the mathematical model. We are going to affect how ANSYS is going to solve that mathematical model. That is, we're affecting the numerical solution. Go to the project page and to and double click on model to bring up the measure this brings up what's called ansys mechanical and it's our interface to the solver that does all the 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 calculations of you know derives the algebraic equations and so on from the mathematical model and um and this is showing me an isometric view so let me click along z to see the view that you know we have been um considering in the pre-analysis. If your view gets garbled, um, you can always click on Z to get back this, um, this view. I'll highlight mesh in the tree and click on update and that'll give me the default mesh. I always like to throw a default mesh to see what I get. And I'm getting more nodes than I want. If you remember in pre-analysis, you know, we first we considered the case where we have three nodes, and that's a case I want to do first. And, um, and so let's decrease the number of nodes. By the way, you might get a view. So if I go to view, pick shells and beams, okay, you might get a view that looks like that. That's because it's, you know, it's taking each element, right? And it's, it's putting the cross section on it. Purely visualization thing. And to make it less confusing, you know, I'll just keep that turned off. Um, and click along Z and then I'll go to mesh and I'll say mesh control sizing and I need to you know specify a size for the um, the elements along that line so I'll select the line selection filter or edge selection filter click on that and say apply okay so this sizing applies to this entity and I will say number of divisions is two, which is equal to the number of elements. And behavior, I will set to hard. Um, I talked about this in, um, in other examples, like in, I believe in conduction, and, and this is a hard setting, so I don't want answers to mess with it. For simple geometries, you give it a hard setting for the element sizes and so on. For complex geometries, you give it a soft setting because you know you want to give answers enough flexibility to try to fit um, you know complex parts. Okay, and then you I'll say update, and if I highlight mesh, it looks like it has three nodes, which is what I want. However, if I go to statistics, you know it shows me five nodes, and that's because it's putting in these mid-side nodes. So if I go back here um, and select that, so it's putting a, a node in, in the middle and a node in the middle, it seems like it at least. Um, and in the conduction example, in our conduction case study, um, I talked about how the, you know, the mid-side nodes, or even in the big ideas in finite elements, how the mid-side nodes gives you a higher order interpolation. Here we already have a third order interpolation of third order polynomial, so we don't need that. Um, and so, you know, I, I tried dropping it, dropping the mid side nodes. Um, by the way, in an earlier version, earlier versions of ANSYS, you know, this is under, I believe, under advanced. So you might see it on, in different places. This is, um, this is new that it's over here in 17.1. So if I drop it and then I update the mesh, it didn't change it, okay? Um, however, it turns out it's not putting in the mid-side nodes and you know, one can confirm it uh, once we do the solution and uh, if I remember it, I will show you how to confirm it, okay? So the number of elements is two, the number of nodes is three, and this is node one. We can consider this node one, node two, and node three. That's all we really need to specify in, um, in the mesh. So here the meshing is very simple. But before we go on to completing the specification of the mathematical model, I want to consider 
the number of degrees, you know, what, what's called the total number of degrees of freedom. We'll take a look at that next.